Today I'll share with you five giftable centerpieces. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome back. The first project, we're going to use a thrifted red Santa. I've got two different types of ribbon to choose from, both from Dollar Tree and red, a foam block, a basket of any type. This is my little frosty hat. This is a thrifted piece of candle ring and some small ornaments. I'm also going to be using a pick from some florals. Now the first thing you need to do when you thrift anything is to give it a good cleaning, brushing, look for anything that needs to be repaired, fix it. I'm going to take the hanger off of here, adjust all these little tinselly branches that are on the tree to make them look in order and in shape. And then I'm going to also work on the front of this little hat basket by kind of zhuzhing around my greenery and then taking off the little silk pieces. We're going to add some more into it later that look a little better. A little tip for you, if you're using any type of a basket, if you have sort of a, a soft but stiff brush, you can use that to clean things. This vacuuming is one thing, but using a little brush will help get all the dust out of the little cracks. So any little scratches on here, which there's a little bit of damage where the paint is chipped off, I'm just gonna go over it with the marker or you could use some black paint. I'm gonna trim down that foam where it will fit into the top and just push it in. Now I'll take the remaining pieces or the scraps and just push them in all around here. This is gonna make a little platform for us. We'll be able to attach any greenery into it and we'll also be able to use it so that Santa, Santa has a place to stand. So what you see me using is greenery that I have had for a while now. I get most of my greenery from the Goodwill bins. Thankfully, there are people who uh, donate rather than throwing that stuff in the trash, and I love to have it. So it works out for me greatly. So I'm just going to sort of center that candle ring in the middle. And then I'm going to take those pieces of evergreen and go around like in an X shape or a north, south, east, and west kind of shape. And rather than gluing this down with hot glue, I am using these floral pins to keep them in place. If you don't have floral pins, you can use scrap pieces of floral, like the little greenery branches that you might cut your flowers off of. You can just bend those like a bobby pin and you can just push those down in there and it will hold it in place. Now this little piece was sort of broken on its stem, so I'm just gluing it to the piece around it so it will stand up and be nice and pretty. Now the opening in there is perfect to stand Santa in. So I'm just gonna stand him up in the middle, see where I would like him to be positioned, keeping in mind the front of my basket so that everything's facing the right direction. And then I'm going to use some more of those pins to just put around his boot and into the foam. In this way, if I choose to use him again on something else, I can take him off with no damage at all. Now I'm going to start putting on any other little pieces that I think would look good in here to give it that beautiful, rich woodland look that we are all loving so much this year. Some of these little pieces of branch have snow on those and some of them have pine cones. Some do not. It's going to give it some variety. I am not looking for a symmetrical arrangement for this piece. So it's just going to be here and there, depending on what I feel like looks good, you know, to me at the time. And I, I recommend that you do the same thing when you do yours. Make it your own and do it on a budget, right? That's what we do on this channel. Okay, so now I'm just going to take some pieces again of that same thing. I've cut these into smaller pieces that I can put here and there, and then I glue them in place just to give it a little more richness and a little more, I don't know, there's something about the woods and the forest that's just so comforting to me any time of year. It's just beautiful and the sounds and the smells, it's just, it's a gorgeous thing, right? It's a gorgeous thing. So I like to embellish with that as much as I can because it's peaceful and comforting to me. It brings me joy. If you prefer not to use as much greenery, you certainly do not have to. You can do some little ornaments. You could do anything you like, really. 
You could cover this entire thing in little ornaments if you wanted. So now the front of this little basket hat looks nice and lush like the top. Now I'm going to make one little pick and I'll show you how to do that. So I'll just take this one piece that I've already taken all the florals off of. I'll take three ornaments and I'm just going to do a green, a white, and a red. Pull off the little caps and hangers and they'll fit over the ends of these. All you have to do is add some hot glue. Yes, I know those are the three I want because I like them staggered like that. So then I can cut the other pieces off because we won't need those and I don't want them to be on there and in the way. So we will cut those off in a moment. You can add some hot glue on the stem and then just push it straight down into there. It'll rest on the bottom of the ornament and the glue will dry and you'll have a beautiful little pick with ornaments on it. Or if you prefer, you can just put some glue on your ornament and poke it down in your florals. Now that's looking much better. I know I want to put a bow on here, so I'm going to take this red satin ribbon and just make a very simple shoelace bow. I like this color red with this arrangement because of the berries that are in that candle ring that are on the top where Santa is standing. You can certainly mix your reds though if you would like. So this arrangement is sort of a traditional, sort of a woodland. Mm, I don't know exactly how you would. I, I would like to say that I can't exactly put my creations into a box. It's a little bit of everything, right? But that's just how I like it. All right, so I'm going to trim this down just a little because I don't need that much length. And then I will poke it down in there beside Santa. And look at that. This brings me joy. I hope that it brings you some joy too. Yes. The next one is the resting deer. I think you're going to like it. Again, we're going to have some ribbons here. Ribbons that coordinate with what we have. I've got some little picks. Had them for years. I usually use them in decorating. These I used in another project. You can see where I put them together with some little branch pieces. And then another stem of that same greenery. I've got this beautiful little deer that I got at Dirt Cheap. And if you're familiar with Dirt Cheap, you see you can sometimes, sometimes they're damaged, sometimes they're you know, but if you get them on a really good deal, it's worth it. You're not going to see the damage on the deer the way I fix it. And then this piece, I think this was given to me by somebody. But I don't think I thrifted it myself. Now, I don't want to put moss on here, but you certainly could. I'm going to cover this with just some green paint. Doesn't really matter. If I had dark green, I would have used it. You're really not going to see it. I just wanted to cover up the wood color on the top. I'm going to use some double stick mounting tape. You can get alien tape, you can get whatever you want to use here, or you can just use hot glue. But if I do it this way, I can take that deer off and use them again. So I'm just putting it sort of at an angle, but you see how well this holds? It works very well. I'll pluck this branch apart like I did the rest of them and just pull it into pieces. And I kind of like to look and see if I'm doing more snowy, then I want to have more snowy pieces together. If I'm doing more that are just green, I like to have just the green together, if that makes sense. It just seems to have more of a smooth look. So I'm going to go around and make this look almost as if this deer is resting in the wintertime. He's resting in a little hidden place because that's what deer like to do. They don't lay right out in the open. They like to Kind of put themselves where they're protected so that's what this little deer is doing he is hiding right there in this evergreen i'm going to put just pieces here and there i start off going in one direction but you know you can if you have pieces that you want to stand up you can do it that way if you have pieces that are on a pick and you want to lift that deer up to make it higher you can put it on some foam and then you can press your pieces into the foam but these are like a plastic they don't have a hard pick i would have to add picks to them so i just want to show you an option in case you don't have that but you see how the deer is just kind of it looks like he's just laying there in the branches and i love that i think it's very pretty and i love that deep dark green on this deer 
That's why I got this deer. I was like, I have to have that. He's going to look beautiful in my room. Got to have him. So this piece of wood worked out and the greenery, everything just worked out perfectly for this little deer. If you don't have one, maybe you have a deer that's white or you get your little deer from Dollar Tree, you can spray paint it or you can chalk paint it. You know, you can change things up with paint to really make a big difference. And one can of spray paint goes a pretty long way when you craft with it. All right, so I've taken some little bits and pieces off of the other picks that I had and I'm gonna use those here and there. I like that this, uh, I think it's like a Dusty Miller or a lamb's ear. It's very similar to the velvet that is on the deer and that beautiful bluish color that is in that green it just looks so pretty with this, I think. You could of course stop here if you would like, but you know, I'm gonna add some more to it because we wanna have a snack available for the deer. We're gonna have some berries. I'm gonna put these little berry branches right next to the um, the lighter green foliage that we have and just add a little hot glue and it'll stay in place just here and there there's really no pattern to the way i'm doing this but they're like little clusters here and there so pretty oh well, i hope you like him as much as i do i really love this little deer and all of these projects that i'm doing today are not difficult projects at all to do. One takes a little more time, but they're really not complicated. Okay, so now I have some of this beautiful, rich, deep wine colored ribbon. It's like a wine or a burgundy. And I'm just gonna wrap it around the deer's neck and make the same bow that we made before for the other project that we finished. And I'm just gonna tie this around his neck. It is so rich and elegant. I can just really see this on a table with some candles around it. And y'all, the way I'm calling these centerpieces, these are not big swag-like centerpieces. These are smaller. I personally have a very old farmhouse table that is round. You can open it with leaves. You can add two leaves to it, but for, for now, it's round all the time, year round. So I can put in the middle of that something small and round and still have room on the table to serve meals when we want to eat. I love the way that this turned out. So if you've got a smaller table, you don't wanna take up as much space, this is gonna be perfect. The next project is going to be our faux metal pine cone. I've got a gray and a brushed silver here, two different colors. I have this pine cone that I thrifted, love it, but it is in a silver color and we're gonna change that. This mold that I also thrifted, this is gonna be our base. And this is one of the two sets of rings that you can get at Dollar Tree. And this ribbon is from Dollar Tree. It's like a paper ribbon. So I know that I need to do something with this beautiful cone. And I wanna make this look the same way that the bottom looks. I want this all to look like it goes together. So I'm going to start covering up the light, shiny silver with some of this, I think this is medium gray paint. And I'm gonna go all over this pine cone. Now, I'm not gonna do it like heavily to cover up every single thing. That's not my, that's not my idea. I want it to look more like something that is galvanized or aged naturally, like the mold that is underneath it. You get what I'm saying with that? So I'm gonna just brush this over here and I'm using a rough brush because it gives me that kind of um, skippy look or the chippy look that I'm looking for. Now for this ring, I decided to use this paper ribbon to wrap it because it needs to be covered. And it's very, it's gonna be easy to paint for one thing. And the color is already similar to what we're using with the grays and the, you know, the white and gray sort of color with the darker areas in it. You know what I mean. So I'm gonna wrap it all the way around here and then I'll glue it back on itself and I want it to match. So I'm gonna grab some more of that gray paint that we just used on the comb, and I'll start laying some layers down on top of this ring with the same chippy brush. I always start light. You know that, y'all know that if you've been here a while, and I know that many of y'all always leave me sweet comments. So I know that y'all know, I like to start off kind of light and then I build up gradually. Now I'm gonna take some black after I've got as much as I think I need 
I'm going to take some black because you can see the very dark areas in that mold. And I'm going to start just dry brushing that black all over and on the edges. And this I will build up as well until I get it the depth of color that I think will match as, as close as I can get. And I'm not a professional painter, so this is always just kind of play around with it until I get it the way I like it. But I think it looks pretty good. So once that cone has dried, I'm going to go back over it with a little bit of the dry brush. And also, again, same thing. I'm going to brush over it in light layers until I get it the consistency or the depth that I really like. And you can see already with me painting this how different it looks from where we started. Look at that. Yes. So we're going to add a little more black, mainly focusing on the tips of those cone pieces. And look at that. That's pretty darn close, right? Pretty good. All right. So now I'm going to use the opposite side. I'm going to add a little glue and my mounting tape. Now the glue is not, you don't necessarily have to add it, but I want to be sure this doesn't move. I want to be darn sure it doesn't move. So I'm going to put five pieces of mountain tape on there. If you need some weight, if you have a heavier ornament that you use on top or you use a topiary piece, go ahead and put some rocks or something to weigh it down so that this doesn't topple over because it's going to be kind of wide. Then I'm going to press that mounting tape onto the edges of that beautiful mold until I feel like it's all locked in place. All right. Now the hole in the middle has to be addressed, so I'm just going to put a piece of cardboard paper on the bottom, just hot glue it on there, and then stuff the inside part with some paper towels until they reach the top. I'll fill that little well up with some hot glue, and then I can just put the cone right down on top of it. I'll push it in there, and it does go down into the, the hole just a little bit, and hold it in place until that glue sets up. It's going to take a minute, so be patient. But once it's done, it's going to look like that. Then we can start adding our greenery. When I look at this, it kind of reminds me of a fountain in a very old home. Doesn't that look like something? I just love that. I just love it. I have to say that since I have made it, it is one of the pieces that I think I'm most proud of, that I actually had the vision of it, and then it turned out better than I thought it would. So I'm very proud of this piece and I hope that you like it and that somebody out there will try to duplicate this. All right, so I'm gonna take a pick and I'm gonna cut it apart, same old, same old, and I'm using the same picks over and over again. You know, I'm using the same type of greenery. You can change yours up. This is for demonstration purposes. Plus, I really like the way this foliage looks. I'm going to add it in so that all the way around, it has this beautiful greenery. You could trim, cut, make sure everything is pretty much balanced, you know, in this one. And then I'll add some of these snowy branches. You can cut the ends if the branches are too long, but you want to need enough in there since you don't have foam to attach it to that it, the weight of itself will hold in that little opening. Then of course, I'm just going to add hot glue because what if you don't have foam, right? I'm going to show you options, 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 y'all. Options to make it your own. Always, always. So I put my little snowy branches in here. And once I feel like everything is how I like it, I'll get a little bit of my Gorilla Glue and I will start tacking a couple of the main pieces down. So the heavier pieces, the pieces that are on top that will hold the rest of them in place, just going to tack it down here and there to make sure nothing falls apart. And of course, if you're giving this as a gift, you definitely want to make sure that this does not fall apart. I was thinking with these centerpieces, they would be perfect to give as a hostess gift for someone who is making Christmas dinner. You know, if you don't have to do all the work and you want to show them that you really appreciate all the work that goes into that, you can bring them a little something like this that you made yourself and how beautiful would that be on their table. I know I'd love it. Thank you, thank you to my channel members. You guys mean the world to me and so does every bit of the support that you give me. Thank you. Okay, the next one is going to be our cardinals. There will not be a Christmas that goes by that I don't use cardinals. Okay, so here's the dome that I have. And this little dome came from, uh, originally from Target in the dollar spot. It was a $5 piece, but I got it at dirt cheap. A candlestick. This was a Pier 1 candlestick that I thrifted. No, Ikea. Then I have some more of those pieces of greenery, specifically with the snow. And I have two little ornaments. These are actually for the yard and they are two different positioned cardinals. 
And then I'm gonna use some of these pieces of wood from Dollar Tree. I'll take some of this brown paint and I'm gonna spray paint the base and also the candlestick outside and let them dry completely. Then I'm going to attach these two pieces together. I know that I wanna do them this way, perfect. So I'm gonna add some of my E6000 in four spots. And then I will be filling in with my hot glue. The hot glue is gonna dry fast, so you always wanna put that on last, right? You don't want that to set up too quick. I'm gonna pull it to myself so I can get right over the top and try to eyeball that to get it exactly center. It helps with balance if you are centered. So give it a few minutes, let it set up, flip it over, and she's ready to go. That's beautiful, and it looks to me like it goes together, doesn't it? Yes. All right, so you can certainly use a branch if you have one, but you're gonna need something with a wide base. I didn't have a branch with a wide enough base to hold this up. So I'm gonna make one out of the pieces that I got from a bag at Dollar Tree. This is going to look sort of like a tree. I'm gonna have two different elevations because the two birds are too wide to sit side by side. And I like to have a little dimension by raising one up and leaving one a little bit lower. So I'm just going to use my hot glue. You can use wood glue, whatever you like here, just to get those to stick together. And I'm going to add these, just stack them up on top of one another to make it look kind of like it's standing on a stump or a branch. Then I have one little pedestal for one bird and the other little bird will get his spot on the flat spot. So once I know how I want them to sit, I'm gonna go ahead and glue them on right onto their little bases. One here, and then I'll put the other one up here. I like these two little birds and they have been in a lot of my videos. I do have a Cardinals video. I'll try to link that if I can recall. If not, and you wanna see it, just let me know in the comments and I'll give you the link. Okay, now they're ready to go inside the dome. So, I have to make sure that they fit. I already know that they do fit because I checked them beforehand, but this is how I check that. Now, I'm gonna put it in there. I will rock it back and forth just a tad. And then once you do that, if it's, if it's sitting flat down, you know that's where you can glue them. Makes sense? If it's crooked and it's leaning, then that's not the right way to do it. You're gonna have to adjust. Easiest way for me to do it is the way I just showed you. And carefully take off the lid, leave most of it in place and you just kind of pull up the side and press it back down. That way you put it in exactly the spot that you just had it in. Gonna add a little glue here, scoot it all the way over to the bird where it was and just stick it in place. And while it's still wet, you can adjust just a little. Be sure that you are checking using your dome to make sure that you can still get everything in. Now with the greenery is what we're gonna add next and there will be, there will be a way to check this and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. The magic word today is snow, and I want you to tell me, is it snowing where you live? All right. If you want to win the last subscriber appreciation box of this year, go ahead and follow those directions there for your chance to win. All right. Now I'm just going to put these snowy branches in here, here and there. And this is just one of those things. I'm just doing it to my taste. I'm just adding some pieces in. It's gonna look sort of like they're in the woods or they're in a tree and um, they're just happy out there in the woods and and we're loving, we're loving having a little peek in on their life. Now these little branches that I have are in like threes. There's like um, a trio on each one. They do have a wide bottom where they connect to the wire and you can use that part as a stand, but you're also gonna need to support your pieces by just kind of gluing them, tacking them down to the bird, tacking them down to the branch that's behind them. You know, you can um, keep those things in places, in place with that glue and it'll look nice that way. Nothing will fall out. I don't suggest you glue everything flat down. You still want some movement in there. You still want it to look realistic, but you can certainly take little strategic areas and glue them in place. I love these. Cardinals mean so much to me. You know, I'm 50 years old. In my lifetime, I've been through a lot of loss um, in my family. And the older I get, the more okay, it becomes kind of a common thing, unfortunately. And Cardinals are a wonderful way to 
remember those who are who are gone on. You know, my mother-in-law, when I first came to this house where we live, she had a cardinal that used to visit all the time. He would just practically beat the window down upstairs all the time and we would just laugh about it. She told me about the bird because I was like, what's hitting the window? And she said, it's those cardinals. It's that same cardinal. Well, we assume it was the same one. They would always beat on the window. So um, after she passed away, I then, when I would see that cardinal because he would still come, um, I would then think of her and how funny it was that that bird would do that. So just a little happy memory, you know, um, helps me think about her around holidays. So we miss her and we love her. But there has been a lot of loss, loss and I think that cardinals are a wonderful way to um, represent and to, you know, just kind of include those in your family who have moved on, you know, your family or friends who have moved on. So just a happy way to look at it, I guess. Okay, so now we're going to put a top on here after we've got it looking beautiful. I'm just going to take the silver part and attach it to the top middle where the little dot is. You know, they have a little dot on the top where they're formed. Then I'll add some glue and then put the ornament right down in there. To help me get the branches in, I'm gonna take this little awl that I have. You can use a stick or, you know, I could have used a ruler, whatever. And just as I'm putting it down, just push the little branches on the inside and they're gonna look great. And this is how this one is going to look. I absolutely love it. It's going on the fireplace. The next is going to be a Santa lantern. Okay, y'all, so here's my other Santa. This is a lantern that I thrifted. Isn't it gorgeous? Doesn't have a top. I don't know if it came with one or not. Here's the blue Santa that matches the red one we used. I'm gonna use a little string of lights, a little moss mat. I'm gonna cut this mat in somewhat of a oblong shape. I just kind of eyeballed how big I would need it to be to fit in the bottom. And I'm just gonna trim it out to reach that measurement. Now, when I put it in, it's gonna push down underneath the little glass pieces and it will stay in place. And for now, I'm gonna leave it this way, but we will glue it later. Okay, nice. Now, I'm going to cut the hanger off of Santa and I also cut the little knob off where we attach him to the string. And I'm going to adjust the limbs on his Christmas tree. Put all those little ornaments or berries to the front. I love the old world look of these Santas, they're so pretty. All right, so I'm gonna add a little hot glue on his feet to hold him down, because there's no foam, so there's no way to attach him with pins. Stand him up back there. I wanna put him sort of toward the back so I can use the back window as a support for him. And then I'm going to start putting the lights in. Now, I should've put the lights in before I put Santa in, but you know, I didn't glue him in, so I'm actually gonna take him out in just a minute and show you. But you wanna start off by putting in your lights before you glue Santa down. So see, I can pull him and the grass and everything comes up or the moss. Now I can go in there with my little hands and get inside of my lantern. If your hands are too big, if your lantern is too small, just have somebody help you with this part. It's very easy. All I'm doing is going around and around in a rectangular shape until I get to the top of that front window. So the window that's in front of Santa is gonna be the one that has the light behind it. I'm gonna add just a dot of glue on the control to put it against the inside wall because we want to kind of hover it. Now, my lights came from Timu. Um, this is not a sponsored video, but I really, really love these affordable string lights because the controller is so small, you can hide it just about anywhere. It's even smaller than those cork tops. So yeah, really good, really good thing. Now I'm gonna add some glue in the bottom, tuck that moss right back down in there. Turn my light off so I don't waste my battery. And then we can start putting in some greenery in the bottom. This is not necessary, but you know me, I'm always trying to do a little more if I can. And why not? I have plenty of the greenery, may as well use it to embellish these beautiful centerpieces that can be given as gifts. So I know he needs to stick right against that wall for support. I'm just gonna add some of that same clear mounting tape just a tad and stick it right to the glass. You won't even see it. Santa is very secure. So I'm gonna make a swag for the top since this lantern does not have any top of a top on it. I'm just gonna make something. I'm gonna trim off just a little bit of wire and I'll take three of these picks that are the same as what we put on the inside floor. And I'm gonna wrap these together almost in like a fan shape. 
just going to wrap, wrap, wrap until they are tightly together. And then make sure that you disguise your little ends of your wire so nobody pokes their fingers and that it's not sticking out. I'll bend it so it can lay over the side of the lantern and it will have sort of a, a rustic look, I think. It's very, this room is very Victorian looking to me. So I'm gonna just take these pieces and just add a little bit of hot glue to cover up the original stem. So we're going in the opposite direction just to cover up the stem and the wire. I'm gonna wrap that piece and glue it to the tip and just hold it in place for just a moment until it sets up. This is just all those little extra pieces of details that really give your projects that extra attention and make them look more high end. Okay, no bald spots. All right, so now I know I like this and I like the direction and I'm loving Santa. He is living his best life in that lantern. But I don't like the top so flat. So it's on wire, right? All we have to do is just bend it. Just flex those wires a little bit and it'll give it just a bit of a dome on the top and give the look that I, I think I prefer. Now that I know it's exactly as I like it, I'll add some hot glue and I'm using my Gorilla Glue here and just take a couple of little areas to attach this on the sides to hold everything in place. I want to disguise this, but not put glue on it. No more than we already did. So I'll just make sure that I can still get to it, but kind of camouflage it behind the branch. And this is how this one is going to look. Oh, I love him. He's so nice. Nice Santa. I hope I'm on the nice list. Are y'all on the nice list this year? I hope so. All right. So now I'm going to show you all five of those projects we did. Here's our red Santa. This would so easily fit on a round table. You could even put these on end tables if you wanted, but I think these are perfect. Perfect little space saver arrangements for your table, or maybe even a Christmas brunch. I am so excited to have y'all stop by and visit with me today and to participate in the giveaways that we have done this month. It has been a load of fun. We have had some highs and lows for sure, but, Things are looking up, and I'm looking forward to the next year being a very good year where we learn all kinds of good things about each other and where the channel grows to the point where I'm bringing you all kinds of new ideas. I appreciate every kind comment, every extra tip, every bit of information that you give me to help me. It just means the world to me. You watching, you being here, the support that you give matters. Every thumbs up, every comment, everything i appreciate you and i am just humbled by the kindness that that i feel and the love that i feel every day it really means so much to me if you have not got your package if you have been a winner and notified you will be getting your package soon if i have notified you that you are a winner i need your email and i need your shipping address so that i can get your stuff out to you asap I want you to get these goodies as soon as possible if you're new to my channel, I would very much love if you would subscribe and hit the notification bell and give me a thumbs up if you really enjoyed the video. I'd also like to remind you that we do have channel memberships now. So if you wanna do a little more to show your support and love, you can go to the information in my description box below and see how you can become one of our magic makers, which are our exclusive memberships. Right now we're doing a Christmas card giveaway and I cannot wait to see what everybody has gotten. I thank you today for being here, for supporting me, for enjoying my videos. I thank you for being a member, a viewer, a subscriber, somebody who clipped by accident, or if this is your first time here. If you've been here a long time, you know I love you. I'll see you again soon. Bye.